YouTube, Air of Carthage here, and I have some exciting footage to show you. I got the opportunity to get hands-on with Three Kingdoms campaign. Humility keeps one honest. Liu Bei sees chaos in the face of Dong Zhuo, and will not rest until the tyrant's corruption is uprooted and the Han Dynasty restored. That's right. Get to pay us Liu Bei here. I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce everybody's names over and over and over again until it finally sinks in my head. So yes, I got to get hands on with the campaign. And as you can see, the campaign map is beautiful. This tyranny is barbaric. What's of the people? Dong Zhuo has fled west to Chang'an with the young Emperor Xian, his captive. He holds my nephew at sword point. The coalition delays and wastes time. You are poised, ready to strike now. Though we are fortunate to be under the protection of Lord Gon Xuan Zan, the time may be coming to forge our own path. But yellow turbans and bandits still persist. There must be justice. The people deserve peace. Your sworn brothers are ready to fight. Their oaths were bound long ago. Dong Zhuo's treason must face justice. We are arrows on the wind, my lord. We fly wherever you command. All right, I wanted you all to listen to the intro instead of me talking. The voice acting in this game, in my opinion, is very good. The campaign map is beautiful. And it has an art form to it that just feels to me to be quite immersive into the time period that this is set in. Alright, what is that time period? Well, the source material. So Three Kingdoms draws from two primary sources of information and inspiration. The first is the 14th century novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, by Lao Gzong. I'm going to say it wrong. I apologize. The second is the record of the Three Kingdoms written in the 3rd century. Um, so those are the two primary references here. You're basically um, set in this place that's perfect for total war because you have all these rival factions set up to vie for power and you get to decide the outcome. Now, I'm going to show you a lot of the things on the campaign map, but I kind of just wanted this, this battle here. You guys got to see the campaign map. I'm going to let this battle play. I have some more campaign map features that I want to show you. I just want to give you some um, quick impressions while this battle's going on. And uh, I don't know if you all noticed or not, but right in the beginning of that battle, there was a new feature where you can just select our, all your units and it drags them intuitively into a smart formation so you don't have to waste a lot of time deploying your troops. It's really cool. And here I'm going to give you some really good footage of duels in action. Like I actually got owned off his horse there. This is Zhang Fei, I think. Um, he is an absolute beast in duels and I'm dueling the leader of the yellow turbans there and then uh, I'm just kind of zooming around to get some different shots. Anyway, the campaign in this game from the time that I got hands on with it, it feels very, very deep. And there's probably a few reasons for that. One, Warhammer's campaign was streamlined a lot, as was Rome 2. Um, they were streamlined because there's a lot of people out there, myself included, who likes the campaign map to be streamlined. Because, we're like for me, for instance, I'm there for the battles, especially in Warhammer. Um, in, the, in the historical Total Wars, I don't mind the campaign back being a little more intense. But in Warhammer, I'm pretty much there for the battles. The campaign map for me is just a way to level up my heroes, take settlements, and recruit troops and stuff like that. Now, this is much deeper than that, and you all are going to see that here today. CA has put an extraordinary effort into the campaign map. Um, of this game. There's another just quick little battle clip I wanted to show you all. Minor settlement battles, folks. They're a thing again. This was actually a battle at a uh, iron mine, I believe. But in any case, yes, they have added a lot of stuff in. Diplomacy has had a huge overhaul. You've already seen some videos that they've been publishing about it. It's cool. It has a lot of features, and you're going to need to use it on the campaign map or else you're going to find yourself in trouble. Um, so it's pretty cool. There's a ton of resources, tons of resources on the campaign map, and each one, you know, obviously can be involved in trade, and sometimes you have to have resources for certain buildings uh, or other things, so there's a reason to chase all those resources and to keep track of them. Um, you have a nice building tree, 
um, with cool explanations of how it works. Now we're on the campaign map, let me show you some of this stuff. So for instance, here's a diplomatic screen. Um, I didn't have any food, so I had to negotiate with Kong Rong here to try and get some food. Well, here's that option. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to ask him um, for 10 food, which is probably too much to start with. You can see that um, this is kind of a cool feature that you see a minus 16 where it says they give and then a plus one where you give. So finally some clarity as to what the math is behind diplomacy deals and how you can kind of adjust it to make things to where you know you might get a deal accepted because it's just so infuriating, infuriating making, making stuff work. There is like a quick thing you can click to say, what is it gonna to take to make this work? And so that's kind of a quick way, or you can do what I'm doing here, which is you kind of tinker around, you see where I got it down to minus nine on their side, and now I'm going plus on my side. So I'm basically figuring out how much money do I have to pay them to get them to give me food. And the reason I'm asking these jerks for food also is I was actually moving towards a province. I knew I needed food. I didn't have it early on. It's very important for my military supplies. Um, yes, your armies have supplies. You can actually see that. In the bottom left corner right now, there's a little supply wagon um, underneath where it says Lu Bay. Um, your armies have to have supplies, and if you get out extended beyond your supply lines, you lose those really quick. So you're not just going to go marching around the map without a supply line. Um, and the Kong Rong's faction took all the local food, screwed me over in that, like they saw me walking towards it. Anyway, we'll get back to the food. Look at the tech tree. They just showed this off recently too in one of their own videos. You should go watch that for more details. The tech tree is literally a tree, and it's beautiful. The art style is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, and it branches out all over the place. It's really, really nice. And again, they've spent a lot of time, and it's actually called reforms. And after the end of so many turns, you get to go through these reforms. And it was really a nice feature that, again, had a lot of depth and a lot of art and thinking to it. It was not just thrown together. Anyway, diplomacy was cool. There was alliances, there was marriages, you could trade regions, Your you have choice. to trade for food, you can trade for resources, um, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, and I'm not even going to be able to cover it all today. Recently CA released videos about spies. Um, I didn't even have time to get into that here. That's how deep the campaign was. I got to get hands-on with this game for probably close to two hours, and it was not even enough to begin to get started. Um, it was that deep. I am a veteran of Total War. I have played Total War campaigns for a decade, um, or longer, I guess, maybe a little bit longer. And this game had me really thinking about all the features, which that's good. That's, that's the way you want it, right, folks? That's the way you want it. If you sit down and you figure it out in 30 minutes, it's gonna get old really fast. <laughs> that, that is not this game. There is a lot to it, and um, I wish that I would have had 10, 12, 20 hours to get hands-on with this to give you a full reporting. Everything's different. That's obviously probably going to have to wait until the game comes out, but I am very glad I got to get my hands on it because I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Um, there's other pieces to the campaign map that you'll see here coming up soon, but I mean, overall, uh, it was fun, and it was a challenge to, to learn all the stuff on the map, and it, it was fun to see how it worked. In fact, you can see me right here. I have low supplies, and you're going to see me looking at it here. I'm looking at you know how quickly are my supplies replenishing. I had to get positive food before I could replenish my supplies, or else my troops were going to uh, start Battle to mutiny. Not um, the so there's just all kinds of stuff. Here you see another diplomacy thing popping up where Kong Rong's trying to do more diplomacy A with me. Rejection. I didn't like his deal, so I rejected him. <laughs> and it was rude, apparently. Uh, no, so in any case, I got another thing I want to show you here, so let's check this out. So yeah, this is a, a good opportunity where I was going to show you how I'm about to declare war on Kong Rong. I traded with him, I got the food I needed, but then they took away that trade deal not too long later, and I could not get it to work, and then here comes uh, Sao Sao asking me for a deal, and I'm like, hey, well, this would be good actually, I'm going to start being nice to him so that he can help protect me when I go to war against Khan Rong. So I start making this friend out of Sao Sao. Um, I let him have military access earlier. It's just really cool the intrigue that goes on in the diplomacy. There really is a lot more to the diplomacy than there used to be, and it matters a lot. Um, so it was really exciting. Um, so yeah, I start you know, making deals with Sao Sao so I can screw this guy over, and now I'm gonna declare war on him because they won't give me the food I need. I can't go without food. 
so it forces the war. You will find us so here we are. <laughs> and now I get in this big war relatively early in the game. Um, so yeah, it was it was really exciting. Again, look at all the features in the campaign map. Check this out. This is the character, um, the skill tree. I'm looking at it with Zhang Fei. Um, this guy was like a melee beast. Uh, so the drunken brawler up there. He could duel anybody, and he was so good at it. It's so much fun to use him in battle. And by the way, this is the romance mode. There's two modes to the game, right? There's a romance mode and a records mode. Romance is where there's a little bit of exaggeration on history and your leaders are a little bit larger than life. And records mode is where um, they're kind of like an old school total war where the, your, your general is flesh and blood and in a somewhat squishy uh, bodyguard unit, right? Um, anyway, all we got to play was the romance mode. Uh, we haven't gotten a chance to play records mode yet. Here you're seeing me add troops. Well, recruiting the troops into the retinue of the the different leaders in your army, um, each one of them can have six units, and they give buffs to those units depending on their specialties, and they can recruit certain units based on their skills. So all of your recruiting for generals is based on skills, um, and so it's not it's not buildings in your city or getting to those buildings that your general. And you can see here, I'm going to eventually recruit some uh, some spear guard because all I had is militia in my army because I had just been using cheap units to avoid the upkeep. So yeah, it's it's really cool how that works. So your leaders are absolutely critical. If you get them killed in battle, you may not be able to recruit the right troops afterwards. So you, you develop this deep connection for the leaders in your campaign. There's offices and stuff that they can be put into, uh, and if you didn't see that already, you'll see it here in a minute. Um, you have to keep the leaders of your, uh, or the different characters in your faction happy. You can send them out on assignments like subterfuge or whatever it is with other, um, or you can put them into government type offices uh, over your different settlements and provinces. You can put them in your army like I have here and they can be leaders. Those characters have to feel like they're involved or they start to grow disengaged and then guess what? Your enemy might use them against you. The campaign map, yeah, here's the faction like where you can assign people into different uh, stuff. The only thing that was available at this time was administrator, and I just wasn't really that interested in messing with it because you guys know how I get impatient with this kind of stuff. I'm going to learn it at some point. You can see candidates over to the right. You can recruit candidates. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really cool. And each of these characters you could assign, like, um, back on that screen where we, I was showing the skill points, you can assign them different equipment and special items and other stuff like that too. So there's a lot of character development and attachment to the characters. You're going to get to know these characters, and CA told us there are tons of characters from the novel that are in the game, all based on the characters from the novel, which is going to make it really exciting. Um, so, I mean, again, the depth that they put into this has just been downright impressive. Um, like I said, I, I remember my... <laughs> My wife actually got to go with me to the event, and I remember talking to her as we were walking uh, walking out of the event. I was like, my gosh, like I just wish I had more hours to play this because I, I want to figure out all these things, all these nuances, and I was really enthralled in it. Um, it, was, it was awesome. Uh, I wanted to show you this last big battle. This is a big battle that started right there in that turn in. I didn't quite show it, but uh, this is me going up against... Um, Hung Rung or whatever their name was there, this faction I'm fighting, uh, King Kong, something like that, I'm not really sure. Anyway, um, there was this large battle where I'm actually outnumbered and I'm going into a rather dangerous situation, but I'm going to be counting on Zhang Fei, who is my, you know, just brawler of a melee unit to bail me out by killing the enemy generals and breaking the morale. Um, of the enemy troops. You can see I've got a bunch of archers on opening fire. And again, this is cool because all this has culminated. Like, this is the faction that I traded with them for food. I thought they were going to be my ally. And then they turn on me. They take away my trade deal. I then start conspiring with Sao Sao to make myself more powerful. And then I need their food, and so I attack them and, you know, catch them with their pants down, basically. And here is the battle that culminated from all that with all of our leaders clashing in one big fight and it's desperate. Whoever wins this will take control of the region, you know, get access to all those resources and become more powerful and be able to knock the other one down. So this, this battle was absolutely critical for me to win and it is going to be tough because I'm outnumbered and the enemy has a ton of skirmish units. So I've got to get in here. You can see me just putting Zhang Fei into a duel immediately. 
so that I can start to take out their generals. I've got to break their leadership. Got this light cavalry and other stuff I'm going to start swinging around. I'll get you some close-ups here on Zhang Fei in just a minute. Um, but, I mean, I'll just give you a few other impressions. You can see me slinging through the UI here. The UI, I really like it. I don't know how the other people were towards it. I didn't get a chance to ask him, but the UI is clean. It's easy to read. Um, it felt easy to click movement orders. CA just seems to continue to improve. Um, again, maybe the game's new. Maybe I haven't had enough time with it, but that's the impression that I walked away with. Um, that the game uh, just controls really easy. And with every iteration of Total War, especially with Warhammer and now into this one, CA just continues to make controls in the game so much better. Uh, oh, so much better. Um, so... I love the way you select units. I love the way that the generals fight. You can hear the banter in the battle. Uh, there's a lot of talking and voice acting on the campaign map. The campaign map is beautiful. You have the different types of settlements. The settlements, again, are pretty interesting. It's kind of almost like Empire Total War in a way. You have the major city settlements, and then there's all the minor settlements that are always focused on some kind of craft, trade, or resource. Um, and those minor settlements play a huge role in your economy and the places that you need to capture. So. Again, it's just a really good job of, of taking some of the new things in Total War that we love, some of the old things that we loved, and then creating a whole new mix around all of it, too. This, this game um, it has me very, very excited. Now, just from a pure, like, you know, battle standpoint and all that stuff, you know, like, Warhammer is my thing these days. I love it, and I'm going to continue to play it, but I'm excited because now I'm going to have, in my opinion, it hasn't come out yet, but I've gotten to play it twice, I am pretty darn certain that I'm going to enjoy the crap out of this game, based on everything I've played so far. Could things happen that I don't know about? Sure. Um, but I mean, so far everything I've played has been impressive and I know I'm going to enjoy the crap out of this game if it's anything like the demos that I have gotten to play so far. Um, so I'm excited. That's two Total War games that I can enjoy the crap out of and that's the way I want it. I wouldn't mind having ten Total War games that I can enjoy the crap out of. So, I mean, some of you may think, well, Air, was there anything negative? You're just showering praise on the game. I'll say a few things. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what's, what's negative about it, per se. I haven't put enough hours into it yet. I'm excited about the game. I'm going to be very transparent with you. I'm very excited about this game. So, I'm looking at it through these glasses of like, oh man, this is fun. I had so much fun playing it, right? I'm not looking for those types of things yet. You may check around with the other people who captured footage, see if they had any impressions, see if they had anything happen. Um, but for me, I am enjoying it and I'm thoroughly excited for it. Um, I mean, we've... I, anyway, like I said, that's just my impressions of it so far. So, can you get hyped? I think yes. <laughs> I think yes. We've had great launches recently with Warhammer, Warhammer 2. This game, CA, has really pulled out the stops. This is not just a copy-paste historical Total War um, that's exactly like the ones we've had in the past. There is tons of new thought process that went into this. Lots of characters, lots of artwork. The music is beautiful. The voice acting is great. The characters are exciting. The setting is exciting. It's an all-new setting. The units look cool. The battles are fun. I am pumped, folks, and I hope you are too. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments.